thanks for still being with us um, at our web conference. So the last part of today will be about the um, the chemical industry and also the, the dairy industry. So we have one presentation about the chemical industry and um, solutions in um, the Inspire Water project and then another one about the dairy industry which was done in the project Spot View. Um, and the very last presentation for today um, will be about another project, uh, Rivachem, and we have them on board because they are the third project within the um, the Spire call that dealt with the water management in the process industry and um, they already uh, ended their project and um, so Daniel will give us some insights about um, the results of this project but uh, we will start with um, with Josef Kochan uh, we see his slide already. His presentation will be about improved technology solutions in the chemical industry. Josef uh, works at um, Clariant as Senior Manager Environmental Technologies. And um, as said, this was done within the project Inspire Water at the um, demonstration site in Tarragona. Josef, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Denis. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of the Clarion case study from Tarragona where we demonstrated uh, zero liquid discharge concept by using diverse membrane technologies. So um, to my presentation, the outline is as following. I'm going to give you some background information, motivation, challenges, and we introduce the Tarragona site. Afterwards, I will introduce the pilot concept, pilot concept, and uh, also the technologies used. And at the end, I will share some experiment, uh, experience uh, from the piloting. All right, there are basically two major challenges or aspects uh, bringing the industry to think about water reuse. One of them is water scarcity, so the availability of water in general from, from rivers, and also its quality as well and also the possibility of water abstraction for well, from wells and also from other sources that are used for, for cities. So in some cases and some regions you are even cut off those uh, sources. Secondly, there is of course the strict discharge limits. They are quite, uh, quite known trends worldwide and the industry must think of new solution, technological solution to cope uh, with, this, uh, with this challenge. They also not only the COD as um, global uh, overall parameters, but in many cases we are talking even about individual substances like micropollutants. Um, the system uh, water management uh, concept basically applied in Tarragona. So basically on the side we take the water from a river Ebro. The water is uh, treated, pre-treated and distributed by local companies before uh, sent to a Clarion and other adjacent companies operating on the site. Afterwards, the water is uh, here collected in the central uh, wastewater treatment plant that is operated by Clarion. So at the end, we've got 145,000 cubic meters of water per year that are discharged into the Mediterranean Sea nowadays. We are compliant, of course, with uh, the discharge limits. And now there's the things about aspiration of this project. So if we at this place manage to, to reuse 100% uh, of this wastewater stream, so we are talking about full zero liquid discharge, then we would, that would lead to 70% of, uh, of overall water saving. Um, as you can see, the Tarragona site, so the site is about one hour car drive from Barcelona to the south on the coast. And um, in Tarragona, Clarion has two business units operating. As mentioned already, there are also three other companies um, operating on the site. Uh, what is important to say to the water, water we are we were investigated or treated in our Inspire water part was a secondary effluent um, with very high falling and, and scaling potential because this wastewater is coming from discontinuous processes of four different companies and also in addition from multi-purpose pilot plan that contributes significantly also to quite high variation in the composition. 
we, were, we are producing there different uh, substances like surfactants, detergents, polymers, and emulsifiers. They are quite well known as quite sticky substances. They stay and stick very easily to the membrane surface. So for the piloting, we took a, a branch stream, a side stream of five cubimeter per hour. So there's a real stream. We, are, we were facing real conditions uh, during the piloting uh, period. And down there, you might see the, the concept used. So for the secondary effluent treatment that comes from the existing wastewater treatment plan, we use membrane-based concept, ultrafiltration as pretreatment for reverse osmosis. And up front to membrane units, we've got m m more uh, catalysts. So we were operating basically this part of the concept in parallel to have a direct comparison between one line operating with a, with a catalyst or the line without. The water from Aspamia, basically from the RO, is then uh, considered for, for reuse. In the second part, we have the Bluetech technology uh, treating the concentrate from the RO. So basically, we employ here forward osmosis that is coupled with high brine reverse osmosis or membrane distillation or both. Uh, for recovery of water from the draw solution. Uh, what was very important for the piloting was that we changed the neutralization from the lime to, to sodium, uh, sodium hydroxide because uh, just to mitigate uh, the scaling risk uh, for the membranes. So operation time, 18 months in, in total, including commissioning time. Um, that's, that gives you an impression about technology used, about the size of them. So we've got a container size of the double deck uh, of the pot. When you have ultrafiltration and reverse osmosis, in the middle you see the more catalyst on the right. There's a forward osmosis, inclusive draw solution recovery by reverse osmosis or membrane distillation. Then we look uh, into the experiences from the pilot phase. So after a couple of weeks of the operation, we found out that we can reach, we could reach only about 40% uh, permeate recovery on the RO stage due to high organic load. So we observed basically folding and scaling, and we the, the process was quite unstable. We had we had a lot of uh, interruptions because just of water quality we were treating. And we had to do a lot of backwashing and, and cleaning cycles. So this is basically on the right the explanation for that. So you see here uh, the feed, there's a secondary effluent, and you see the permeate from the UF. And you might see in this range of 30 minutes, you see that the UF was able just to reject only around 10% of the COD. So we've had a really high organic loads directly to the arrow stage, causing the operation only up to 40% of recovery. So we found out there's the good news that the payment quality was good and suitable for recycling. And we had to, at this point of the operation, do something. And uh, we found out it's, in, it's inevitable to basically reduce the organic load in order to get better operational conditions. So we decided to take an additional pretreatment sta uh, stage. We took granulated, granulated activated carbon we reduced the COD content down to 100 milligram per liter, and that led automatically to achieving 65% uh, of RO permeate recovery. So that was a very nice uh, number that was actually planned at the beginning of the project. And we found out that this pretreatment also led to much stable operation of membrane units. So we reduced the number of cleaning and backwashing cycles and we are able to produce higher grade of, uh, of, of permeate quality. So basically, um, we also, in addition to what I mentioned at the beginning, the individual substances, micropollutants, in our case, dioxane, intensively dis discussed at the site, could uh, have been uh, removed uh, by more than 99% by the combination of chronically activated carbon and uh, reverse osmosis. Okay, then we go to the uh, brine treatment. For that, we used uh, the concept of Bluetech, where we, it's basically a two-step uh, um, water extraction process. In the first step, basically, you use the forward osmosis membrane and you discharge water from the RO brand into the uh, draw solution circuit, where you recover the water 
by using uh, high branded versus osmosis or membrane uh, distillation. So some results uh, from the piloting. So you are able to discharge food at 57 percent of water that we recovered from the brine, RO brine. It corresponds to around 2.3 increase of volumetric concentration factor. There were even higher numbers uh, experienced in the bench size test. In terms of energy, we are talking here about 36 kilowatt hours per cubic meter of water discharge, of, of, of permeate discharge. It's estimated number, and when you calculate this uh, to a full scale um, plant, where you have also pressure recovery in place, you might come up with uh, around 20 kilowatt hours per cubic meter um, um, specific energy consumption. So when you compare this to classic evaporation, which is the case in the liquid discharge concepts, you are much cheaper in terms of uh, reclaiming water. Very good news for the blue tech was that they could uh, lift their the technology readiness level factor from four to five and make the technology uh, more major. I would like to, to conclude the outputs of the project. So basically, the end of the pipe application of membranes for treatment of industrial water from specialty chemicals industry sites are technically very challenging. We saw that we had to apply additional pre-treatment steps in order to get um, proper operation conditions. In terms of the water recovery, what was the main aspiration? Number 85% was achieved basically by the demonstrated pilot concept. We found out that the quality of the payment of the RO, but also from the forward osmosis, is can be used or is suitable for medium and, and low quality applications. In terms of the removal of, uh, of micropollutants, dioxin could have been removed below the regulatory limits, also very great. And at the end, it's very important also for us when considering uh, transferability of uh, the knowledge to other sites, Europe-wide, but also globally. The FO, HBRO technology is a very promising alternative for brand treatment and so makes the zero liquid discharge concept uh, very attractive. Um, at this point, I would like to also acknowledge and thanks to all the partners um, co-working, cooperating in, in our case study in Tarragona. So the colleagues from Dupont, from, from Moll, Catalysator Technique, from Bluetech, and from Fachhochschule uh, Nord Westschweiz. And also many thanks to colleagues from Clarion who cooperated as well. And last but not least, many thanks also to the European Commission for uh, supporting the project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Josef. Um, at the moment, I see some people typing in probably some questions, but while they are doing this, maybe we can start with the first question from my side. Um, you as Clariant, what did you um, think, what were the main like takeaways um, that you had from, from this project? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but if, you, if you look at um, at the, the concept pilot, I mean, the zero liquid discharge such is very attractive and probably also the trend of the future, it looks like that. And it's, I mean, it's everybody knows uh, how it should look like, how it should work, but it's also very important to, to know, to understand how the individual technologies uh, perform and contribute to, to the overall achievement. And for us, it was very important to see the, the weaknesses Say and also the the strengths of uh, of the individual technologies, and not only considering them uh, individually, but also the interplay, the interfaces, how they work uh, together. And this is basically the main takeaway for Clarion, because as said, this topic is is globally very important, and the knowledge gained in in mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in Tarragona during the pro during the Inspire Water project is is uh, very valuable. And we would like also to, to, to use it globally. Yes, I see um, further three questions. Maybe you have a very quick answer. Um, are there any possibilities to separate the streams upstream and to find treatment near the discharge for each process or industry? Yeah, I, I mean, that's, if I understand the, the question well, I mean, there's the, the possibilities are still there, but it depends pretty much on... Uh, 
on on the on the situation on the boundary conditions you have on the water you are, you've been treating. I mean, in our case, we we can consider to separate it and and, and use the upstreams in in different parts of the process. We were evaluating this as well, like, of course, in the project. But I've, if you just look um, in the, the overall balance of of the whole system, so basically the 70 person I mentioned at the beginning are just only to reduce the use of water from from river Ebro. So basically, when you get your payment of a quality that can uh, substitute, or is at the same quality of the quality of Ebro River, then you can you can get saving 70 percent. If you manage also when you play around with the stream quality, you can use it for different purposes in the process as well. So I think there is a uh, quite a lot of room to optimize uh, the reuse process or the reuse concept and, and the dishes in, depending on the needs where you can reuse and apply your water. Yeah, and, and um, I think, Josef, we uh, need to go on with the next presentation. Maybe you have the time to answer some of the questions in the chat, um, if this would be possible. I will do, I will do. Great. I will do it. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening.